I'll be so glad when the when sun go down. When the sun go down, I'll be so glad when the sun go down. When the sun go down, I ain't all that sleepy, but uh -huh. I wanna lie down. But I wanna lie down. I ain't all that sleepy, but uh -huh. I wanna lie down. But I wanna lie down. The matter, baby. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can't see. Well, I can't see. Oh, what got the matter, baby? I guess like parents today are teaching their kids on how to survive an encounter with police. Um, my parents taught us how to, to survive in a in the uh, institution of racism. We were just uh, told where to go, where not to go. Um, we. Uh, they were white and colored, everything. It was colored then. We were, we were not African Americans. We were colored. That's the, the label that uh, that we wore. So we just grew grew up um, being told uh, what to use, what not to use, um, how to respect the system. It was a matter of survival, I think. Don't you think, Al? Definitely. Definitely. A matter of survival. survival. So we. Um, uh, it was almost like uh, we were not allowed to go to the uh, to the public park, to the, to the swimming pool, uh, amusement parks. We would sometimes see them advertised on television, um, and we would be want to go, of course, as kids, and we couldn't go to those. Um, the, even the public library. Uh, it didn't even have a colored or white section. Well, we just were not allowed to go to the public library. Um, uh, our schools were segregated. Uh, even after they, they passed the, uh, the uh, desegregation law in 1955, which we were three years old then. Um, but our schools never desegregated um, until the year after our, our, our year of graduation. Of course, I left Tennessee. So, at 16, but it was 1970 when they finally uh, desegregated. But you had colored and white drinking fountains. Uh, the colored fountain was always uh, uh, substandard. It was dirty, unkempt, and they didn't they didn't invest any money into it. Um, you had um, colored and white sections of the movie theater. We could go to the movie theater, but we had to set up stairs. And they always neglected to uh, to clean or to to keep up the colored section. It was supposed to be separate and, un and equal, but everything was separate and completely unequal. I see things like very interesting. How could I go downtown and want some money or go to a bank and ask for a loan and I got seven hundred thirty-three dollars a month and they don't give me up to seven hundred thirty-three dollars? I'll, they, I'll be walking out, and they say, I ain't going to give that nigger nothing. That's horrible words, isn't it? So I thought to myself, I said, well, why wouldn't they give me the loan? I got over a million dollars worth of coins in my safe deposit box and music and poetry, but they wouldn't give me the loan. So they like kids to me, you feel me? So maybe they was raised to hate black, and that's wrong. I feel like, how can you tell God what to do? I can't help I was born black, you feel me? The prayer is the most powerful thing in the world. How can you tell me that God didn't make me? So how can I tell my black son not to love a white girl or any girl or tell him you can't bring that girl into my house? Racism need to be the leader. But you should have a free choice whether you like that color or not. I hope black people hear me because we don't have no unity. Go down Van Buren and see how many black businesses you see. Go down Van Buren right now, all the way to Avondale, all the way out here, and see how many black businesses you see. It's going to be mostly Mexican, white, Indonesian, Afghanistani, Chinese. I haven't seen them. It's unity is power. The black nation needs to realize that we need to step up. 
Unity is really power, bro. significant and I say this because I think if we as a black people or people who agree that black people do face injustices on a daily basis we would not only be unintentionally agreeing with the white supremacists but we would also be pushing ourselves further away from discovering the underlying problems in regards to racism. Well one person came to me and she told me that in order for black individuals to be respected by a white community, they would have to change the way they speak and the way that they dress. And to me, I felt her argument was an invalid one because I feel like a lot of people don't respect black people regardless of what he or she does. You know, and I feel like if you, if you look at President Barack Obama, he dresses in suits on a daily basis. He speaks eloquently, and people try to diminish him as a president because they don't refer to him as President Barack Obama. They just refer to him as Barack Obama, or just Obama. And he has been serving our country for seven plus years. So that shows that people don't respect him or they're trying to say that he's underqualified as a president. If you look back at Martin Luther King. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life, longevity, has its place. He was a civil rights movement leader and to me I feel like he dressed in suits also and he spoke eloquently and non-violently to the different masses and he was still assassinated. So to me it seems that it doesn't really matter what we do as a black people. To me it doesn't guarantee the respect we receive, it doesn't guarantee how successful we are in life. So it's like, to me, for you to set standards and say what is socially acceptable, to me, it just shows that you are contributing to racism. My thoughts on Ferguson, um, I could definitely relate to those people. Um, losing losing somebody that you feel that's close to you, I could relate to that. And um, it not not only was it about um, how they felt about the death of one of their lost brothers, but just anger that that they held that they hold back and anger that they have to portray as if they're not angry and not frustrated with the things that where that the, the way that things are going it's just um, some people are just upset and being black being black I can relate to that I understand how it feels when I see them do it it's kind of like I want to tell them you know you you got to remember everybody's watching you when you ride you got to remember that what they want to do is look at your every action and once they see you mess up, this is what they're going to label us as. So when I see that, when I see them being ignorant or being, you know, crazy or in the streets wilding and breaking things, it, it for another black person, it, it'll make them look at them and say, well, wow, you know, you're doing exactly what they want you to do. But this whole thing, uh, what is happening in Ferguson and Baltimore and Chicago and around the country, uh, is just the exposure of what, is, what is, uh, has been going on in this country all the time. Unbreakable, so all are capable. I thought that you knew that we are no different from the rest. Just a little bit more muscles in our chest and just a little bit more naps in our flesh. But is it not best if we call it quits to reduce stress just for Martin Luther King Jr.? Can we 
Take a stand, hand in hand as a nation. Take the world and rearrange it. Puzzle the pieces, defeat the hatred. Put it under our feet and obtain it. Find ourselves engaged in higher learning, motivated. Little verses killed the serpent in the garden that we all played in as blacks. Whites, Mexicans, even Asians, Dominicans, Samoans, Somalians, we are all even. We are all taken and we are all breathing the same air. So I don't think it's fair that we degrade the heart behind a race in reference to their face or skin color. We are all sisters. We are all brothers. So what happened to unity?